there's tons of them. One of the things is probably not having a college plan. What's the proper funding rule for the grandparents? We can get into that. Our 529 college savings plan is the right choice. We answer those questions. Which other savings options may be better in light of our circumstances? But to Lynette's point, everything is custom, customized for your situation. Will we qualify for tax credits? That's so in my wheelhouse. I know all about everything that relates to education credits and stuff. Which ones? I'll tell you all about it. I'll tell you how to, to, to not mess up and knock yourself out from claiming the education credits. There's all sorts of different things with that. How can we leverage our business to reduce college costs? Would test prep benefit our child? We found this test prep uh, software that would be really helpful. Which school should we apply to maximize financial aid and tuition discounts? Can we maintain or possibly increase retirement contributions during the college years? Yes. How can we maintain or increase cash flow during the college years? That's one of the things as college plans we do as well. Because remember, the first award letter is based on the first year. The second year can look differently if you have a child that's going to school. Like, let's say you have an 18-year-old uh, and a 16-year-old. Well, about the third year in, you now have two kids in college. We know what your EFC will probably be that third year when you have that other child, that rising um, senior going into freshman year. So we look at your cash flow for the four years and kind of manage that all out with whatever aid or things like that. We also realize what aid is considered aid for that year, what aid is renewable. Some people or some colleges offer aid, but then they don't let you know that that's not what we're gonna offer the next year. Sometimes you have to know to ask that. So that's what we help with. What are the appropriate funding strategies for covering the shortfalls? What savings options are best in light of our circumstances? Should we set up an UGMA account? I'm telling you, no. No. We have one now. And after doing this college planning, um, Cheyenne has about $2,500 in hers. Kylie has about $2,300 in hers. Once we hit the, what's called base year. Has anybody ever heard of base year? OK, base year is the January 1st of your child's junior year. That's when everything starts to really get serious. And so January 1st of your, your child's junior year is where all your assets need to be as appropriately allocated as possible to have your best financial aid. And a lot of people think it's the end of senior year. It's not. Base year is January 1st of your child's junior year. So we're going to get rid of the UGMAs before that, definitely. Great question. It's just a, it's, a, it's an account that you open up for a child when they're less than 18 years old. Uniform gifts to minors thing, that's what it's called. So it's just a, it's a saving, it's an account that you just open up. And that, the problem is it's 100% their name. So it's considered a student asset. So when you give it to FAFSA, then FAFSA looks at that student asset and then decides we're going to use a large portion of that. That, like when we did it, that $2,500 made us lose about $1,800 in financial aid. So here's what you do. You just take the money out and dedicate it either to a 529 plan or there's other different things you can do um, to move that so that you can decrease your EMC. And last, any, many more. There's a lot of stuff that we do. Now, here's what it costs. Some people charge about $2,500 for it. We charge, if you're not a client of ours, we charge $800. If you are a tax client, we charge $500. $500 per student. One time fee, and that's all in for everything that we do. Why is that? Because as tax clients, we have a lot of the information already, and so that makes it easier. And if you're a tax client, you've been hanging out with me for a few years, so we know you, and the, 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 the business has earned money from you anyway, so I don't need to charge you a bulk of extra money and stuff like that. So we charge $500 per student to become your family's college planner. If you have an eighth grader, $500. Are there any additional fees? Not, out of, not from us. If we recommend you guys do SAT prep, and then we give you a recommendation, that third party may have a fee. But other than that, that's the fee for us to engage and become your college partners. So with that being said, um, if Linda's here, if we want to talk about that, it's now time for, oh, if, if Mary, both parents must attend the meeting, so we, we want the commitment from both parents. So if, if possible, both parents come. So in conclusion, informed or uninformed, which buyer of a college education will you choose to be? Do you want to be that informed buyer or that uninformed buyer? Q&A, talk to us. 
Thank you, Suzanne. Um, at some point, then, do you bring the kid in, too, then? Oh. Like, I'm thinking, for me to tell my kid, listen, if you just bring up your SAT score, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whereas if you say, yep. this is what it's going to be, and this is what it's going to mean after you graduate, because I can tell her till I'm blue in the face, uh -huh. but if somebody else tells her, maybe. That, that's part of that. One of the things we do, because um, once you engage, then we have to meet the we have to meet the student, and then we put them on a journey towards understanding them a little bit better, and then encouraging them. There's encouraging them to do things like that. So we say, okay, when are you planning to take your SAT? Tell me a little bit about what school you want to go to. Okay, well actually that school wants the ACT. Okay, and so and what did, did you get your did you take your SAT scores yet? What was your scores? Okay, you need to take them again. Well, we encourage you to take them again because based on what you're telling me you want, this particular school needs this. And if we can get it up to here, this particular school has a certain dollar amount that they like to offer. This is the scholarship that's available with the school. So all of those become the fuel that gets people to start making some decisions like that. Come on, love this stuff. This is, this is really, this, we had to knock this stuff out for compliance. We gotta walk through this stuff. But now, this is the good stuff. Janine, talk to us. Is a child going into their senior year, is it too late? Good question. It's never too late. Okay. No. <laughs> no, I'm sitting here. We've already taken the SATs. We already have, you know. So mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, is it too late? Or because we've already passed that January 1st deadline for... It's, it's not because we still have a variety of different things we can do. Okay. Award letters. We can look at schools. You guys haven't selected the school. No, we have not. We're in the throes of that, which is when I went to our first college and saw sticker prices even in Millersville, I about because when we went to Millersville, it was so oh, yeah. I was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's in Millersville. I think I looked up today when I was looking for East Charlotte. In Millersville, I think it's around twenty-one thousand dollars. Yeah, it's a closer to it's heading to twenty-two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the short answer is it's not too late because again. Well, to remember um, the next point, there's a strategic planning process and then there's a tactical planning. Between 11th and 12th grade, where you still have some tactical planning opportunities there. So yeah, we still have some opportunities, even in senior year. Yes. What else? Talk to us. Questions? Thanks, Steve. For 11th and I, this would only be grandchildren with me. Is this directly if the parents or can the grandparents do this too? Good question. Probably you... This would, and for you guys' unique situation, if this is something that resonates with you, you would probably encourage your kids to do it. Right. And maybe pay for it for the kids. <laughs> you know, then, uh, well, I, I, I say that jokingly, but I guess no, they would want to have a, if you felt like they would buy into it, because it's a partnership. So, uh, well, you're, they were excited with what we showed them already. Yeah. To. So now, if they would be interested in this, they would, I'm assuming they would have an 800 hour fee where they stand right now, correct? We can, yeah, we can work. We can, we, I'm, it's not the, it's not a money play for me. I don't, the money isn't the issue. We're, we're okay if I We've got a lot of grandkids. All right, we got seven, <laughs> yeah. yeah I'll, 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 I'll bring up the same thing. Um, the, the, the spirit of what we're trying to accomplish is we realize throughout the years how much people are hurting because of student loans, how much people are hurting because of this. So this isn't really a money play for us. Really, we charge because it's a it's a time commitment. It's a lot of energy that we're going to put into it. And so we just, we want people to appreciate it. And we want people to appreciate it with a dollar amount. And then they, that shows their commitment because we're going to encourage your child to do things, but we're not the parents and we can't make them do things. But we want to encourage them to. So short answer is, um, if they're if they're interested, we can work with them and figure out something. Right. And you can work long term phone calls. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there have to be an occasional office visit in New right. Jersey. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. right. We have to do that. Mm -hmm. Come on, what else? Thank you. What's, the, what's the timeline for applying to colleges? The six to ten that they should apply to. What's the timeline? Great question. You typically want to start applying to school. See, I'm, I'm hesitating because they just changed this. It's called prior prior now, and we're still trying to wrap ourselves around it. The, the, the fast reforms have changed in terms of when they, like for example, it went from January to October. Went from yeah, and so so the short answer is we're we're trying to figure out when's an appropriate time. But now because of prior prior, October first, you can you you can apply using 2015's tax return 
you can fill out your FAFSA for. So the short answer is we're still working through that in terms of when's the best time. What are you thinking? Any extra thoughts there? What are you thinking? Like? Well, just thinking about our uh, son is 